For almost 700 years, these disciplined warriors were respected and feared in Japan, and they carved out a path that made themselves legends across the world. A group of the fighting elites trained in martial arts, these highly disciplined men and women with their light armor and super sharp blades made European knights look like clumsy amateurs. And the badass stories told about them are insane. Let's travel back in time now and hear about some of these samurai warrior legends. Being a cunning woman might have got you thrown in the stocks or the local duck pond back in the day, but there's a reason why they were popular. We can all do with an impartial outside voice to help us find clarity when we're feeling lost or stuck in a tricky situation. Today's sponsor, Purple Garden, specializes in connecting you with advisors who won't sugarcoat things, just give you the insight to make the right decision. Purple Garden helps connect you with talented psychic, tarot, and astrology advisors who are all vetted and voted for by people like you. All you have to do is create an account, and then you can choose from hundreds of advisors. And you can change advisor each time depending on what you need. Each advisor has a short video message where they introduce themselves and talk about their experience, which makes it really easy to choose the right advisor for you. You can also choose whether you'd rather connect via text, phone call, or video call. If you're looking for clarity, go to purplegarden.com slash medievalmadness or scan the QR code that's on screen and use my promo code medievalmadness to get your first deposit of $10 matched and start finding some answers. Welcome to Medieval Japanese Madness. The same, but different. Most historians consider the dates of the medieval period in Japan to be slightly different from that in Europe, which stretched from the late 5th to the late 15th centuries. In Japan, however, the medieval period ran from 1185 to 1603, but just like in Europe for the Japanese, the 418 years of their Middle Ages encompassed long periods of civil wars between larger state owners and warlords, whilst the government struggled to unify the country. There were also many similarities between the class systems in medieval Japan and Europe. Peasants were at the bottom of the pile and the emperor at the top, with the aristocratic knights just below. Society was arranged around the feudal relationship between a lord or daimyo and his serf, where land was usually granted in return for some form of military service. One of the big differences between medieval European and Japanese society, though, is that when the upper echelons were reached, there was a strange split. At the empirical court, on one side were the aristocratic nobles, and on the other government and military side of things was the shogun. These were the military dictators appointed by the emperor. Below this, there were two types of knights, military knights and court knights. The military side being the samurai, and the aristocratic side being the nobility. Another difference between Japanese and European society during the Middle Ages was that merchants were considered to be the lowest of the low. In fact, the only people to be considered even more wretched were tanners, undertakers, and butchers. This was because in Japan during the Middle Ages, a mixture of Buddhist, Shinto, and traditional religious beliefs meant that anyone who had to deal with their bodies was considered untouchable. And just as European knights followed the chivalric code, the samurai had their own standards of behavior known as Bushido, meaning the way of the warrior. This unwritten and unspoken code focused on morality, discipline, and honor. Early samurai used spears in battle and bows and arrows when mounted on horseback. Their impressive armor was made from the individual scales of either iron or leather, coated with a thick waterproof lacquer, and sewn together with silk cord to form a breastplate. This meant it was more durable and lighter than English chainmail, and samurai could even wade through waist-deep water and still be able to fight. Later in the 16th century, the scales became larger and the armor became known as gusaku and was worn over kimono-style robes, with combat helmets or kabuto to protect the head and the back of the neck. Two swords are better than one. It was the year 1595 when Miyamoto Musashi made his first kill. He was just 13 years old. Although Musashi was only armed with a wooden practice sword, he killed a samurai from a neighboring village in under a minute. He threw the warrior onto the ground and hit him so hard in the throat that the man died vomiting blood. After this, Musashi traveled around Japan trying to perfect his technique and became the country's greatest swordsman. Even before he was 20, he had earned respect by fiercely fighting in many battles and emerging unscathed. He also began to systematically seek out and murder anyone who was regarded as a swordmaster in a warrior pilgrimage. 
Musashi single-handedly wiped out the Yoshioka family, a clan of well-known swordsmen in a succession of duels. Even after the Yoshioka set a trap for him, Musashi sliced through dozens of them at once. It was during this time that Musashi began to use a two-sword fencing style when fighting, known as Two Heavens as One, an unheard of technique at the time. By the beginning of the 17th century, he was now famous in Japan when he came up against Sasaki Kojiro, his most skillful and feared opponent. Musashi easily defeated Kojiro, but the outcome of the duel was bittersweet for Musashi, and he decided that he would never fight to the death again for fear of robbing the world of any more talented fighters. As an old man, Musashi knew that the end of his life was drawing near, so he moved into a cave and began to write a book about Kenjutsu and the martial arts called the Book of Five Rings. It is considered to be a manual of both technique and philosophy. Because Musashi was a samurai with no lord or master, he was known as a ronin. He never owned any lands. With a record of 61 undefeated jewels, Musashi is considered to be a kenzai, or sword saint, in Japan. The weaker sex? Not all samurai were male. Tomo Gozen served as a concubine to Lord Minamoto no Yoshinika, a famous daimyo during the 12th century Genpai War. At that time, women could train using spears and kaiken daggers when their communities had a lack of male fighters to protect them. Tomo was proficiently trained in archery and using a longsword, and she went into battle at the head of Minamoto's army. During 1181, at the Battle of Yoko Tagawara, she single-handedly managed to collect the heads of seven mounted warriors. In the epic poem, The Tale of Haiki, Tomo was described as a remarkably strong archer, and as a swordswoman, she was a warrior worth a thousand, ready to confront a demon or a god, mounted or on foot. In 1184, at the Battle of Yukaid no Haima, in a move that echoed the Spartans at Thermopylae, Tomo led just 300 troops into a fight against 6,000 enemy soldiers. At Minamoto's final battle of Awazu in 1184, where he died, Tomo fearlessly rode into a group of 30 soldiers. She unhorsed and decapitated the strongest warrior with one swift movement. Later, as Japan entered the 17th century Edo period, the role and status of the female warrior, or honorable geisha, significantly diminished. The One-Eyed Dragon Date Masamune was born in 1566 in Yonzawa Castle, the son of a warlord. He lost the use of his right eye as a child when he contracted smallpox, but there are many stories about how he lost the eye completely. It is said that he plucked it out himself, rather than let the infection spread. One source claims that he pulled it out when a senior clan member said it would make him a target during battle and an enemy would try to grab it. Others said that he had gouged it out deliberately to make himself look more fearsome. Whatever the truth was, Masamune was forever known later as the One-Eyed Dragon. He led troops onto the battlefield when he was just 14 and was the ruler of the Date clan by the time he was 17. But his regime of rape and plunder had consequences, and a rival daimyo named Hatakiyama Yoshitugo took Masamune's elderly father hostage. On the battlefield, Hatakiyama used Masamune's father as a human shield. After his father's death, Masamune's response was to swear vengeance and launch an attack against his enemies. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Masamune was victorious at the Battle of Hitadori Bridge. Well respected for his ethics, Masamune was known for his fearful reputation and his Kabuto helmet, which was decorated with a huge crescent moon, and inspired the one worn by Darth Vader in the Star Wars franchise. The Dragonfly Cutter Honda Tadakatsu was another samurai with a badass helmet. He used his armor to strike fear into his 16th century opponents when he was fighting in battle. He had huge stag antlers attached to the top of his helmet, which made sure that he was always recognizable in the field. Honda chose to use a spear which he named Tombakiri, or Dragonfly Slicer, because its tip was so sharp that if an insect landed on it, it would be cut in two. Tombakiri was made by the famous swordsmith Fujiwara Masazane and is known as one of the three great spears of Japan. It was said to be able to cut through several enemies at the same time with just one swing. As well as his extraordinary lance, Honda also wielded the Nakatsukasa katana with its 67 centimeters long blade. In his finest hour, Honda challenged the whole Toyotomi army with just a handful of men, where they were outnumbered 60 to 1. His opponent was so impressed by Honda's bravery that he ordered that Honda and his men should remain unharmed. Honda was known as one of Japan's greatest generals and the warrior who surpassed death himself. 
because by the end of his life, he had fought in over 57 battles without once suffering from a significant wound. The First Black Samurai No one really knows where Yasuki was born. It's been suggested that it could have been Mozambique, Ethiopia, or Angola. It's even possible that he could have been born into slavery in Portugal. He was taken to Japan by a Jesuit missionary in 1579. Black people had never been seen in Japan before, and Yasuki made quite an impact. Oda Nobunga was at that time probably the most important daimyo in the country. He found Yasuki's fine character, size, and strength so impressive that he made him his personal sword bearer. Yasuki was promoted to samurai in 1581. By 1582, Nobunga was at the very height of his power and practically the leader of Japan. He was betrayed by Akechi Mitsuhide and trapped inside Honoji Temple in Kyoto. Nobunga was forced to die by seppuku and take his own life. Yasuki battled Mitsuhide's forces and escaped the temple taking his master's head with him. This denied Mitsuhide the chance to display Nobunga's head and establish power and legitimacy by displaying it. Not much is known about Yasuki's fate after this. He may have been captured because the last record of him states that he was taken by Mitsuhide's warriors to a Jesuit mission. An Honorable Death Seppuku is a form of Japanese ritualistic suicide and an honorable way of taking one's own life. The act usually involved self-disembowelment by stabbing oneself in the belly and slicing open the stomach before drawing the blade upwards to ensure a fatal wound. The word harikari, which literally means belly cutting, is rarely used in Japan. Some exponents of seppuku would allow themselves to bleed out slowly as a way of showing self-control, sincerity, and courage. Others had the help of a second who would decapitate them with a katana as soon as the first cut was made. Some samurai performed seppuku to prove loyalty to their lord and follow him into death or to recompense for a failure of duty. For most, it was about dying with honor rather than facing the shame of being captured and tortured by the enemy. For women of the samurai class, ritual suicide was known as jigai and involved slicing one's own throat with a short dagger or sword rather than the abdomen. First, the woman would kneel and tie her legs together to ensure that she remained upright and had a dignified posture in death. Jigai was usually performed by the wives of samurai men who had committed seppuku. In the case of military defeat, it was performed to preserve one's honor and prevent rape. The women were carefully taught the practice as children. For any samurai, dying an honorable death was considered to be more important than living a long life. Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Please let us know if you want to see us branch out and cover more topics like this, and I'll see you next week for another video. Cheers.